What's up, everyone? Thanks for tuning in today. I am thrilled to be joined by Leo Luna of Sports Illustrated. Leo, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me, Zach. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Uh, so we're going to talk some 49ers as always, guys, today. And why don't we start off with the recent news? Uh, the 49ers recently signed Deion Jordan. They had both Deion Jordan and Ziggy Anza in for meetings and COVID testing. Why did they pick Deion Jordan and not Ziggy? Well, I think what it came down to is what the medical staff saw. Obviously, from Ian Rappaport's report is that Ansaw's physical cleared. Um, but just because it clear doesn't mean everything's clear um, in what they want in a physical as far as the team goes. The, uh, with Ansaw, he's someone who has missed 14 games over the last two years. While Jordan hasn't played every single game in the last two years, he hasn't missed any games due to injury, so I think that was a big part of it when you have a guy like D. Ford on the defensive line that you're already concerned about injuries with. You have Ronald Blair, who's coming back from an ACL. You're going to be concerned about that as well. So the only guy there that you're not too concerned about um, is, well, obviously Nick Bosa and then Kerry Hyder. So I think that's what it came down to is, okay, our medical staff is telling us Deion Jordan may be the better fit as far as availability goes. And to be completely honest, it's Deion Jordan had a better season than Ansaw last year. When it came down to the quarterback pressure rate, that's the amount of pressures based on the amount of pass rushing snaps. And Deion Jordan was at a 9.6 rate, while Ziggy Ansaw was at a 7.69. So he was not good last year. Yeah, he's the big name, but based on the medical and then based on the production, Deion Jordan was the obvious better fit. I think most fans, when they saw both names getting brought in, they probably remembered Ziggy of a couple of years ago when he was mm -hmm. tied to the 49ers, and they were thinking, right. oh, like, that's the guy we always wanted then, so let's bring him in now. Um, but that makes total sense. You know, it all comes down to health, and the best ability is availability. Mm -hmm. um, now, what type of role do you envision Deion Jordan having on this team? So he's probably going to be behind Kerry Hyder and uh, Ronald Blair in the rotation. But what he does offer is he offsets what they do. They're more of those pass rushers, not uh, power pass rushers, not so much speed. While Deion Jordan could come and give you tremendous speed off the edge, and that fits well when you're trying to look for, okay, if we're going to let D Ford get some rest here, we can replace him with a guy who could do something very similar in his abilities. And that's going to help out Nick Bosa very well. So he just... It, his role is going to be off the bench. It's going to be limited. So like we said, when you're looking at the two names, these aren't guys that are going to be starters. Um, so Deion Jordan had a better season the past two years than Ansa, and he's going to have a minimum role, change of pace, probably anywhere from five snaps a game to 10 at most. Um, but it's what you do in those five to 10 snaps. And, and that's what they needed, and I think that's what his role is going to be moving forward. Obviously, that's saying if everybody is healthy. Yeah, he was incredibly productive yeah. for the limited amount that he did play in Oakland. Mm -hmm. So definitely, although he'll have a reduced role here in San Francisco, yep. he still might have the chance to, to shine a little bit, not much. But mm -hmm. um, Leo, the 49ers also recently acquired former Washington football team tight end Jordan Reed. <laughs> What are your thoughts on that acquisition? Um, yes, the injury history is there. Uh, those concussions concern you just as a fan. Like, man, I hope this guy can be okay. But I think the 49ers are very cautious like that. When you look at who's the general manager of the team, it's John Lynch. He's been in the trenches. He's played safety in the box. He's had a lot of hits in his career. And Kyle Shanahan, yeah, he didn't make it as an NFL player, but he was around his dad throughout his history, as well as he played at the University of Texas, which is a major college program. So they both understand the game when it comes to the injuries and the risk ability that these players have. So they're going to put him in positions that are going to limit those. And what I say is probably his role is going to be around 15 snaps a game, I would say. And if those 15 snaps relate into three receptions, two receptions a game, it, that it's not necessarily about the number with Jordan Reed. It's what does he do in those receptions? Yeah, he could have three receptions in that game, but if one of them's a touchdown and the other two are first downs, that's a great signing that 49ers can have. And on top of that, it, it gives the 49ers the best 22 personnel in all of football. That's two tight ends, two running backs. You have the best tight end, George Kittle. You have the best fullback in Juice Check. You have the 
most yards per carry in Mostert last season amongst any running back. And then Jordan Reed's probably the second best tight end too, only behind Dallas Goddard. So I believe it's a great signing. It allows that offense to be much more diverse. And then that we're saying that without adding in Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, and Jalen Hurd. So it, it's a great signing. A lot of lot of kind of uh, motion uh, pieces in motion. Yeah. Excuse me. And if they come together, this offense is going to be looking pretty good. You know, in in a month or two. But there's a lot of ifs, and hopefully it all works out. But mm-hmm. yeah, Jordan Reed. Just from a fan perspective, like you said, you hope his health is all right because that many concussions is kind of scary to deal with. Right. Um, now, speaking of the 49ers tight ends, what does that mean for Ross Dwelly? Do you think the writing is on the wall for him? Uh, I wouldn't say so. I think he should be fine. The 49ers most likely will go with four tight ends, especially they usually do that anyways. But with the COVID season, um, you got to have those four tight ends. You never know when if some guy orders in food and then for whatever reason they get COVID. So you need to have all four. If you look at last season, um, they carried four with uh, Selick, Kittle, Dwelly, and Toilolo. So it's going to be the same thing this year. Teams generally carry four. So he should be fine. He, his role's obviously going to be decreased, but he'll be on this roster. Yeah, somebody somebody could pull a Lou Williams and stop to get wings. Uh, but <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll see how that plays out. Uh, and then also on the topic of tight ends, the biggest elephant in the room is George Kittle and his extension. Are you concerned about him getting that extension at all? Or do you think it'll happen? And Kyle Shanahan, he seemed to be pretty relaxed about it. Do you kind of have that same feelings towards it? I am pretty relaxed by it. Um, just based on everything I'm hearing, it it's something that does – get you start thinking and bringing in that doubt each day that goes by, especially when someone he's close to, like Trent Taylor, retweets something that the 49ers post about George Kittle and says the front office needs to stop playing. It's like, okay, like, damn, is there serious tension here? But then it's just the the side of me is like, why would Trent Taylor do that when he hasn't been healthy in about a year and a half? Why would he call out John Lynch in the front office? you would assume that it has to be jokes and games and it can't be that serious or else Shanahan could be like, hell, I'm putting Trent Taylor at wide receiver six. He's not even going to see the field if he wants to do something like that. Um, So I think it'll get done. Whether it gets done before this season, that's a big question. I'm not sure. (laughs) Um, I, I believe it would be smart for the 49ers to do that because they have about, last time I checked, $12 million in cap at the moment. Uh, after roster cuts, they could be upwards of 17 or $19 million even. Um, you could try to fit that contract, a lot of it, with a guaranteed signing bonus in year one this season while you have that cap, opposed to next season where that cap is very limited in things that you can do being only $175 million. It's going to be really tricky. Um yeah, I, I saw Trent Taylor was kind of going about it too. And uh, shout out to Brad Graham over at the SF Niners because he kind of started that whole right. Hey George Kittle movement. And it's just like it blew up. And like you said, the people like Trent Taylor and his coach, uh, Josh Alpha Strength on IG, he's kind of been echoing the same sentiment. So it's right. like it really does kind of make you stop and think like if the people that are closest to him are saying this as well, maybe there is something there. But I really hope not. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, now, transitioning into more of the trenches. How do you envision the transition from Joe Staley to Trent Williams going? I be, I see it very, going very seamless. When you have an all-pro, all-world athlete like Williams, and then on top of that, he gets a practice with guys like Nick Bosa off the edge. Maybe if he even sees a little bit of D4 to show him that speed off the edge. Same with Deion Jones off the edge. He's going to have a lot of guys to be able to practice with, or Armstead, even to provide more power. He has a lot of these guys to knock that rust off completely. So I see that happening very seamlessly. Uh, let's also keep in mind, Joe Staley played only about nine games last season, so about almost half of the time it was a replacement left tackle. I don't see that happening with Trent Williams. From what he says, he feels like he's 25, so he's about the best shape he's been in in a while. Um, so it's going to happen very seamless. He's going to be able to knock off that rust when you have edge rushers like the 49ers have opposed to a team that has no name guys rushing off the edge. It may be a little harder to knock that rust off, but Trent Williams should not have an issue. 
man, if one thing is for sure, Trent Williams, Trent Williams is a large human yeah. being. Those pictures of him, he's like a Mack truck. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, definitely, like you said, you know, he's got, he's going against top tier talent on the mm-hmm. other end and practice every day. And he recently said as well, you know, when I was at Washington, these walkthroughs were literally just that walkthroughs. They're yeah. not like that here. Kyle Shanahan has things going up tempo and everybody's mm-hmm. doing, you know, a lot more. So sounds like he's like in the move. So that, that's yeah. great to see. She always want players really happy. Quick. Just really quick. And then on top of that is when you're having to practice to block against the second level, the second level guys don't get easier because now you're going to have to go and, and get Fred Warner, Drake Greenlaw, or Quan Alexander, who are all three very athletic and very good linebackers. So he's going to be able to knock off that rest, and it's going to be very seamless. Awesome, awesome. Uh, now, you t- spoke about Trent Williams being in the best shape of his life. Nick Bosa also said the same thing. How do you see him improving upon what was already an already stellar rookie campaign? Man, it, it's hard to say how someone could improve off of that season. You, you could make the debate maybe sack total, but then that comes into mind when you have guys like Armstead, D4, and Buckner last season. They're all fighting to get that sack total. Um, and, but with Nick Bosa, what I will say is early on in the season, he looked uh, a little rusty, I guess you could say, when getting to the quarterback since he did m- miss so much time at Ohio State. Uh, he seemed a little rusty. I remember the what stands out to me is he had a clear sack with Jameis Winston. He makes those plays later in the year, but in week one, he did not get that sack against uh, Jameis Winston. Made, he lost his footing a little bit. I think that's how he could improve by just being the Nick Bosa we saw through the entire 16 games and not having that rest in the first couple of games. It, it's really scary to think about for the rest of the NFL because if you're talking about him getting better, it's like, Jesus, where's this ceiling on this guy? He was the best um, player in the Super Bowl, the best player on the field. And Mahomes was on that field. Tyree Hill was on that field. Um, so he's the best he could be the best player in the nfl year two year three yeah well man i can't wait to see it um and and speaking of excitement who are you most excited to see heading into this year Ooh, that's a great question because i believe the 49ers do have a lot of exciting players coming into this year they are a very young team but i'm gonna go with positions more than names essentially it's i'm gonna name three it's gonna be the right guard position. That should be Daniel Brunskill starting at right guard. We'll see. Some people still have Tom Compton. I don't see that. Um, so I'll, I'm interested. I see it as a major upgrade over Mike Person. I want to see how much that major upgrade is and how much time that benefits for Jimmy Garoppolo because he did have a lot of internal pressure just looking back at those third and 16 against the Rams. Um, so I'm interested in seeing that position. The next one is the... The three tech with the Forrest Buckner is gone. Do you want Javon Kinlaw taking that full workload as a rookie in a COVID ridden offseason? I'm not sure. You may want to be able to make some guys like Julian Taylor, who's a little better about the uh, uh, with the run opposed to what Kinlaw showed in college. Maybe that transitions better for Kinlaw and now he's an all around player. We'll see. So I'm interested to see what they do on that three tech. Uh, I'm excited about what they were going to do on that three tech because Kinlaw is a hell of a talent. And I believe Julian Taylor has upside from what we saw last season. He played very minimal, but when he did play, he was effective. And then lastly is going to be which receiver is going to step up? Is it going to be Brandon Ayuk? Um, This is obviously outside of Debo. Is it going to be Brandon Ayuk or is it going to be Jalen Hurd? Or is Kendrick Bourne going to go off and have like a 750 yard season with six, seven touchdowns. I'm interested to see which wide receiver is going to be that second guy because Debo's going to get most of the targets when you consider him doing jet sweeps. But who's going to be that second guy at receiver? I'm very interested to see that. Awesome breakdown. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, for me, definitely the receiver position. And you could argue it's a little flashier. So maybe yep. I'm, you're more stereotypical NFL fan, <laughs> but. Who's going to step up? Like they said, Emmanuel Sanders isn't there. There's no vet mm-hmm. anymore. All these guys are a year or two apart, roughly. So somebody needs to step up, and it's going to be interesting to see who emerges out of that. Uh, now, Leo, we're going to move into our rapid-fire segment. You can answer these as many or as little uh, words as you like. Got it. First question for you, black alternates or the 94 throwbacks? Okay, so I was never a fan of the black alternates. 
I just thought it looked a little funky, um, yeah. to be honest, uh, just with the red numbers, black jersey, and then these gold helmets that don't really have any black on it besides the outline on the logo. Um, so I thought that was a little funky. So, uh, I think it looks good when fans wear it, though. I will say that. I have one in my closet right now that I got as a birthday gift, a, a George Kittle black one. Um, it looks good when fans wear it. On the field, I don't think it looks all that appealing. So I'm going to go with those 94 whites. But what I would like to see is some 94 reds. I love those red ones with the, with the black outline, black shadow on them. They could essentially wear whites with their same jerseys they have now and then wear white pants. So I'd love to see those black outline ones um, on the red jerseys, those 94 reds. Those are probably my favorite ones. Yeah, th those are beautiful. Every time I used to play mm -hmm. Madden, I would always switch to those jerseys. They're my favorites. Uh, hopefully we get those soon. Uh, next rapid fire question. Who are you more worried about the 49ers having to deal with, Jamal Adams in Seattle or DeAndre Hopkins in Arizona? That's a great question. Um, because you look at it, I believe Shanahan can scheme around Seattle's defense. It is one of the tougher defenses to scheme around. He said that, but that was against the Legion of Boom era. And now they're trying to re-create that with Jamal Adams. But what they don't have now that they did have then is a defensive line. So I believe the 49ers still have a major advantage when it comes to playing Seattle's defense. With DeAndre Hopkins, now that guy's just a dog. And and I'm interested to see that. Like, which, how Emmanuel Mosley's going to play with that, how Richard Sherman's going to play with that, or K1 in the slot. I'm very, very interested um, because I believe Kyle Shanahan could get over any type of defensive personnel because that guy's a straight genius. Not to take anything away from Salah. But I feel it is a, a lot harder to stop a good offensive players opposed to scheming things against good defensive players. So I, I would say DeAndre Hopkins. It's it's going to be tough either way. That's for sure. They're two mm -hmm. very probably arguably the best player at their positions on either side of the ball on both teams. Yep. So the 49ers will have their hands full. And it just speaks to how good the NFC West is overall. Um, now, last question for you. Is cereal a soup? No. No. Okay. You know why? I don't why? like soup. I like soup, but I like <laughs> cereal, so I'm saying no. Because <laughs> if it wasn't soup, that means I would like soup. So, no. I'm staying away All from right. <laughs> Hottest take, soup is bad. I like that. Thank you so much, Leo, for joining me. Guys, go make sure you follow him. His handle is below on the screen. And make sure you check out his YouTube channel, uh, Tapped in Sports. Leo, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me, Zach. Anytime. All right. Take care.